I'm Aisha and welcome to I Heart Art. I'll be doing oil painting with you today. We'll be working on adding shadows, highlights and details to this painting. If you've tuned into the last two episodes, you would have seen us do the underpainting and a wash and also working on blocking in colours. So let's get started. All right. So I've added in the figure into the painting. So what I'll do is I'll start adding in some shadows into the scarf here as the fabric kind of comes down. So maybe I'll get a little bit of orange and darken it up with some brown. And we want to see if we can show that this scarf is kind of tied around the back and that we've got a knot in here as well that's kind of holding it together. So if you, if you wear a hijab this way, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And you, maybe a fold in the fabric here. It's nicer to go in with a little bit darker maybe, just so that there's a better contrast. And we're also going to want to add in some highlights. So we'll get the same base color, add in a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow just to keep it vibrant. A little more white. Grab some of the thicker medium because we're adding in the top layers. And then maybe just a highlight over the top here and here as well and on the top side of this shadow and also in this knot so on the side another highlight here because you'll have the shadow underneath okay. and now we'll add some highlights to the top so we'll go in with a light beige that we've already mixed. And maybe get some light on the top of the shoulders here. And maybe just underneath where the arm is. Some more on the other side. and over the edge of the arm. We'll go in and see if we can add something a little more defined. Always good to remember contrast is important when you're adding in your highlights and your shadows. That will stop it looking like a block, which is what we were doing in the last episode. along the edge and we can go back in with the brown to create more shadow just underneath so we'll leave that as it is for now it doesn't need to be too defined around the edges so we mentioned earlier it's nice to kind of have something that suggests an edge as opposed to having to put it in yourself. And so now we're just adding in some shadows onto the bottom of the dress as well. Now I've already added some of these shadows in. We're just defining the bottom of the dress a little more. That came up. It's a harsh shadow, that's fine. And we've got some shadows in the legs too. All right, we might move on to the walls. So it gets brighter up here and gets a little bit darker down the bottom. So I might change my brush. 
Let's see what we can use. Let me get my other brush. Okay, so we'll get some purple, mix in a little bit of white. I think just diffusing the shadows a little bit. Add in some darker shadows on the bottom. So a deeper purple. It doesn't have to be even. And we'll do some along this side as well. We'll go in again with the burnt sienna and mix that in with the purple. We'll just dip it into the thicker medium. That way we don't lose the underpainting fully. We get a nice mix of the two. I'll swap this out for a smaller brush while we're putting in the shadows for the wall. So we'll go back in with the burnt sienna and the purple and a darker brown as well. Just creating this shadow where the walls meet. Now we'll carefully paint around the face. Go back in with a darker colour. There you go. Let's see if we can get more of a shadow here. While I'm adding shadows to the walls, I'll see you after your break. Adding in a few different colours and bringing up the contrast of the painting just helps it look less flat. So what I'll do to add in the top perspective of the fence. So I'll go in with a much darker brown. Oop, there's some yellow on there. That's red, brown, some purple. Let's create. where the walls meet again, just redefining that. Get some more medium. And just softening it as you go down. Might go in with a darker brown just along here to give it a really crisp kind of edge. Going with sepia and burnt umber. Keep blending this in too. It's looking a little bit dry, so we'll add in some more medium. It's 
kind of nice to play around with different brush strokes as well. So different directions gives your eye something to play with when you're watching the painting. Okay, I'll probably add some more shadows down here as well where the floor and the wall meet. Now I want this blend out to be muted, which is why I'm mixing it on the page and not on the palette. Otherwise, if you want a really distinct color in where you're blending, you want to blend it on your palette first. Okay, and I think slightly darker. We'll revisit this corner here. Gonna give it one more go with burnt umber. Okay, so now that we've got these two walls kind of done, might try to balance out the top and get this a little bit darker as well before we move on. There we go. Now we can come in and darken these steps. There's going to be a lot of shadow here. So looking at a grey brown. So I'll be using a lot of black. Get a nice dull kind of grey. Lining the stairs, maybe a little bit darker. Now we'll just do the edge of each step. Remembering that they get bigger as you come closer to the edge of the page. Might blend this downwards. Here we go. So that it, the shadows don't look as harsh. See if we can wipe it back a little bit. And the good thing about oil painting is if you feel like you've made a mistake or the idea you're going for isn't really working, you can go in and rub it back with some tissue and it should still look okay. There we go. And maybe some more shadow here underneath our figure. Should be more diffused though. I'm gonna keep working on these stairs and we'll see you after the break. Let's just redefine this step here. There we go. Okay, I think it might be time to add some more shadows to the skirt, just so that it fits in, the shadow of the skirt fits in with the rest of the painting. So I might go for a dark green, mixing in brown and sepia. Just 
slightly darker. There we go. So we're just leaning into the shadows that are already there and making them slightly darker. And again, just defining where the wall meets the floor. Maybe along this step as well. Maybe a few creaks or cracks that you would normally see. All right, I'm going to go through and add a harsher shadow underneath the ledge. So again, when you're working with shadows and paintings, the better, um, the more contrast you have with your shadows, the better it is, which is kind of the opposite of photography where you want the least amount of shadow so that you can, you know, capture someone's face or someone's environment. But bad photos with terrible lighting and lots of shadows that are too contrasty end up making really fantastic paintings. And I might rub that back as well. Just going to go through one more time with shadows across here. Maybe slightly darker shadows across the face as well. Just so that it stands out a little more. So you've got the eye, the eyebrows, the nose. So we're not painting the actual shape, just the shadows that these create. To clean up that shadow there, push it back. Might get a smaller brush with a finer tip. Go back in with the purple. There we go. So I'm going to pick up some of the shadow there and just pop it into here so that we can see the cheekbone. So I'm liking how this side looks and the sky is looking okay too, which means I might move on now to the foliage. So just going to, this part of the painting again is a little more messy. So we've gone in with all of our shadows while we're blocking in main colours. Now what we'll do is we'll go in with a much lighter kind of green that captures the highlight of the leaf. Okay. Gonna add a little bit of white to this green so that it's less vibrant. So you can see maybe a little more blue as well. There you go. So we're just gonna suggest where their leaves are with these kind of highlights. So they'll follow some of the branches that we put in earlier. And that shade might slightly change the further back we go. 
So they won't all have that bright green tinge to it. But we can go back in and add it when we're ready. It's much easier painting leaves or grass in the distance. So go in with all of our highlighted leaves. So we're still keeping this bottom corner here generally dark. We'll take the bright leaves all the way to the edge. Get some more white and blue. A little bit of yellow. So you can use all sorts of techniques. I was using short strokes before that were slightly curved. Now I'm just using a dotting technique, I suppose. So we're going to go in with a much brighter highlight, or a much lighter highlight, I suppose. So these bright greens will kind of act as the mid-tone for the leaves. So we'll go over some of them. Keeping them bigger towards the front. All different kinds of leaves as well. I'm going to go in with my fan brush just to see if I can play around with other textures in here as well. So I'm just dragging the paint up and out gives us something thin wispy to play around with might go in with some lighter colors as well and we can go over that with a darker color too it's interesting to see what it's going to look like So maybe we'll go in with something lighter first. Just a little bit here and here. And then go over the top with something darker. That way we can just drag this up. You get some leaves, some grass growing out of the edge. of the stairs as well, which can be kind of nice. It's a bit mossy. Okay, so that's mostly done for the painting. I think what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll add the little berries. So I'll just grab some crimson, maybe a little bit of white, medium in there just to make it smoother can add some berries over the top in little bunches. Try to make them a bit bigger towards the bottom. Get a little more red, yellow. Just mixing and matching where they go. 
nowhere too specific. Maybe put some here as well. And really the only thing you have to do for the berries is go in with a slightly smaller brush, grab some white, mix it in. This white paint is very sticky. What these will look a bit shiny, there we go. So just a little shine to the top of the berries. And cleaning my brush regularly because it's going to mix with the other colours. And I don't want the berries to look green. And then for the dark red, we'll just add in a little more brown, more crimson. just to give it more dimension. I'm gonna keep working on this painting, but that's all we have for the show today. I hope you've enjoyed the last three episodes. Thanks for watching iHeartArt.